I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to the Oakland Avenue Urban Farm, which is located in the North End uh, community of Detroit. This farm has been in existence since 2008, and it's centered around food production, which is cultivating food, workforce development, which is cultivating people, and community development, which is cultivating community. I am Bryce Detroit. Uh, representing Center for Community-Based Enterprise. We are a grassroots nonprofit organization in the city of Detroit that focuses on helping groups of people come together to investigate and create worker ownership as a solution to the specific socioeconomic circumstances in Detroit. Here's the deal. We have, a, we have a commercial district that is void of any service, any retail that the community has access to. Anything that we want, we are going outside of the community to buy. Even if it's um, toilet paper, <laughs> something as basic as that. You cannot buy it within the community. You have to go across what, what, which is not within the community. That takes money resources out of our community. That's a job that's not in our community. So we started our work in 2008 based on a need that the organization had to identify what was going on in the community. What we discovered is that the biggest needs were food, housing, and jobs. And it just so happened that on Oakland between the church and the Reds Jazz Shoe Shop, there were 10 vacant lots and the church had been managing those lots for about 15, 20 years. We looked at it as an opportunity and started engaging people in the, in the community to talk about what they would like to see um, happen on those lots. And so, um, of course, food was something that was easy to do. And so we started working with um, an organization who had some resources at that time, and it was Greening of Detroit. Being an African-American um, community, culturally appropriate, it was beans, greens, and tomatoes, basically, and some squashes. So that's what we did um, the first couple of years, is uh, build that garden out and cr start creating a space where people felt uh, connected to, and they wanted to see something beautiful on Oakland. In addition to like food, clothing, and shelter, we do have other needs that arise just from our point of culture and ancestry. Uh, so the need to be intimately connected with land, for instance, um, not just on a, yes, we traverse <laughs> the urban landscape, but actually on a, I have an identity that has a reverence for land and appreciates land as a thing that actually can produce everything that we need. So to me, the farm represents that type of legacy this legacy that is 100% attached to ancestral culture where we are self-determined in the work that we produce, we're self-determined in designing our environments, as well as we're self-determined in creating economic infrastructure to support ourself plus our village as we see it. Many of our folks are returning citizens, but we've been, we're now able, we've been now able to reach out into community uh, to provide jobs for youth and other members of our community who not, might not necessarily have a blemish on their record, but they're still looked at as being unemployable. This place has become kind of like a safe haven for people. Uh, once they come and spend time with us, it's contagious. They don't want to leave. It's like, this is the place to be. We had to demonstrate that we have not only the capacity uh, to purchase, but also the capacity to manage properties. And so in doing that, we've been able to each year go back and buy a block of, of properties, nine uh, at a time. Um, and so we've done that for the last three years. We're over 30 lots and 30 properties. Uh, we just, that's huge. We never wanted to be that, that group. But I think it's in divine order because our purpose is not selfish. Our purpose is really trying to protect 
the power of the people who live here, trying to protect the commons. And so it is our goal, and um, hopefully with the help of C2BE and you know some of the um, um, lawyers that we are working with from the Great Lakes Environmental Center, we can figure out how to transfer this ownership back to the community via a land trust into perpetuity so that the, the community has to say in terms of what happens with these properties. There is a significant amount of time that we feel is necessary in this time of transition. Like we're transitioning from straight providing service for the love to realizing that, that to provide this service it must have a sustainable infrastructure, so transitioning into being able to develop these infrastructures, which means transitioning from points of identity that we used to have into these new points of identity, which will allow us to be the directors, the captains, and custodians of these new sustainable entities. Now, I gotta tell you, within the last two weeks, we had an ice cream shop open. It is so exciting. It's open. And people are going, people are driving down the street. I was standing, I went to visit uh, Tuesday to get ice cream. And I was standing out in front of the uh, cafe, the, the dairy, talking with the owner. And a car drove by and they shouted out the window, is that black owned? Is this a black owned business? And we were like, yeah, they made a U-turn. Okay, and came back to buy ice cream. They had five kids in the car. So there is a need, there is a desire, and people know what they would like to see happen.